Hello everyone and welcome back to a totally normal podcast about films, Atenpath, where for some reason we decided to end our relatively great streak of only reviewing really good movies to review Plan 9 from Outer Space. I am the lovely Claire and I'm joined by my co-host, Leon. So tell me, Leon. Plan 9 for Outer Space. What do you think? <laughs> uh, it was something. Definitely a movie. Yeah, if you want to call it that. <laughs> At least it um, was... It was... A lot of pictures. Uh... <laughs> After another. <laughs> um, so this film is made by um, the uh, the late Ed Wood. It um, it stars um, it notably stars Bella Lugosi in his final role. Um, he died. Um, uh, I think he died like part way through filming, but like a good like few years before it came out. Right. Which is really noticeable. But, but, you know, we'll get to that. Um, before we get into, you know, the whole film, Leon, would you like would you like to say whether you recommend this film? If I recommend this film? Hmm. <laughs> it depends. It depends on the person. Like, if you don't watch many films in your life, and you wants to watch only the best movies then not probably if you watch a lot of movies anyway you can give it a shot it's it's fu- it, it has its own charm it's a dub movie it's a really dub movie so like i recommend it if you like so bad it's good films yeah because this is the original So Bad It's Good film, in my opinion. <laughs> I just looked it up. He, uh, Bella Lugosi died three years prior. Before the oh, release. Oh, God. Wow. So, but I don't know how long this movie was in production. Yeah, because I, I have heard that, like... Um, it, he didn't have to make his budget, so... Sometimes it would take him a while to process the movies. Mm. In fact, they found film negatives of films that he just never released. Okay. Um. So yeah. Um. We're gonna get into the plot slash spoiler territory. Although that's I'm gonna be honest here. This isn't the most plot filled thing ever. It's more a series of hilarious events. You don't watch this movie for the blood. Yeah. You watch this movie because it's fucking stupid. Yeah. Um, also, I'm going to say, I don't know anyone's name. And I can't be bothered to look it up because it's just funnier to me that way. <laughs> yeah, so, so probably you will hear a lot of um, unnecessary, complicated descriptions of characters <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> Because everyone's got, like, no layers to them, but also, like, 50. Yeah. Everyone is... Everyone is under development. Everyone, no, everyone's one, no, but also overwritten. Yeah. Like, so, they have one major charac- character uh, trait. Yeah. So, uh, the film begins with um, a narration. It is... Um, a psychic who, in perhaps one of the most bizarrest things ever, and I actually like his opening monologue, he's basically trying to tell us about, like, the future. I, th- I think his exact quote is, we are all interested in the future because that is where we are going to spend the rest of our lives. I like that quote. Yeah, it, 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 it starts off quite nice. But then he starts talking about, and we must reveal the truth about what happened on that day. It's like, hang on, hang on. Are you talking about the future? Are you talking about the past? <laughs> Do you guys 
like in English, is there a uh, a time? What is it called? Like you know, um, you have simple present, past, progressive stuff like this, right? Yes. You have a future. Yeah, we ha- okay. We have so there's there's three ten. They're called the tenses. Yeah. Past, present, and future. Okay. Um. So in German, it's the same, but we have future one and future two. And future what the two. Fuck's future two. <laughs> yeah, future two is you are talking about um, stuff that happened in the future, like you're talking about plans you make, but stuff like after tomorrow after we ate, like this. Okay. And that's future too. So it could be <laughs> that he used a construct like this. That makes sense. It could also be that Edward just didn't reread the paragraph because apparently he wrote these scripts very fast. Well, I would have, would have, uh, sorry, <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed. Okay, so <laughs> let us begin with. Um, so the story begins. Um, it begins with. Um, it begins with the the plane flight, right? Mhm. Um, there's um, some people in a plane who are absolutely not just guys in um, guys in pilots' uniforms in front of a curtain. No, no, it's a cockpit. We promise, it's a cockpit. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> they see... A UFO. They are. They How do. would you describe this UFO? Well, it looked like a flying cigar. Yeah, they say it looked like a flying cigar, which is like, that's not... What it looks like. It's a flying saucer on a string. You can see the string. Yeah. It's so funny. Uh, sorry, ac- just because it's... It's, it's actually just, kind of... Sorry. No, no, you, you finish your point. Okay, it's actually kind of impressive that you are able to see the string because the um, quality... Hmm. Um, it wasn't the best. At least yeah. what we watched. I, I've I've seen a clip of it before, and I think in like more nicer definition, you can see it. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm gonna clarify this here right now. This is not me hating Edward. I, I have a huge amount man. of respect for independent filmmakers and earlier independent filmmakers. Mm-hmm. So, but like. You gotta laugh at fun stuff, you know. You, you, I can respect this movie and also take the shit, take the piss out of it. Yeah, even if it's not um, his intention to make us laugh, he made us laugh, and yeah. I don't think that is uh, it's a bad thing. At least it evokes some emotion in us, and that's better than a. I gotta say it. Um, a really bad movie is better than a mediocre one. Like one you yeah. actually don't care about. I, I'm i inclined to agree. Because I'd rather watch a film that's a little bit shit and entertaining than a film that's just uninteresting. Yeah. It's why I'm not... It's why like we probably aren't going to do a lot of... You know, the generic modern horrors, because a lot of them's just not much to write home about. Mm. You know, is there anything particularly special about Paranormal Activity 3? Mm, no. But or the Saw first five. one was nice. The first one was nice. <laughs> or A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, The Dream Child. <laughs> yeah, horror sequels are... 
terrible. Right. <laughs> they sent Jason to space. Yeah. And then never talked about it. <laughs> yeah, they never freaked out. <laughs> um, but okay, back back to Plan Nine. Um, they um, they see it, but they're told to deny it. It's this huge government conspiracy that like they've known about um, flying saucers for years, but they just deny it. And as this is happening, and there's a really weird tone or shift. We, we have narration, I think this happened a little earlier, of an old man, played by Bela Lugosi, whose wife has died. And it starts off quite sad, and then he dies off screen. I'm not sure whether it's implied it was suicide or an accident. It's uh, At least it seems like a car crash. Yeah, He I walks think it was out a car of crash. the frame and then you hear a car. Yeah. Uh, this film has three funerals in the first 20 minutes. And five deaths. And five deaths, yes. <laughs> because um, the wife dies. The husband dies. Which does an age, does a very big age gap. Yeah. Um, and, um, a police officer dies, but we'll get to him. <laughs> and two great, and two like um, undertakers are murdered, but it's not really explained that. <laughs> What happens to them? They're just shown. Well, like, it's described that like it, they make it sound like it's a bloody mess, but I mean they seem all right. Yeah, they just lay there, and suddenly they are gone. Um. So like you know, suspicious shit is starting to happen. Oh, and I need to point this out because red. Uh, they point this out on the red tour reviews video. Um. Mm-hmm. I need to point this out. Did um you know the um the crit. Where they bury the old man. Yeah. Did you notice how it was a fucking clown car? Because oh, you mean it- because it looks so small and then there's five five people <laughs> coming out of it? Yeah. Well, I just thought it went under the ground. Uh, it probably did went under the ground. But it's still really funny. Yeah. Um, and they like... So... The whole idea is that the aliens are making their move on Earth with their evil ninth plan, the Plan 9 from Outer Space. It is never explained what Plan 1 through 8 is, but I would wa- I pay good money to watch those movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and... Because they seem like the kind of villains who, like... We're going to take down all of the world's cars. And then they put tax on the road. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, yeah. Um, so their evil plan is to raise the planet's dead. Which sounds cool, except for one major problem. They raise three zombies. And they can't even fucking control them. <laughs> <laughs> well... Kind of. They can control them. Kind of. Yeah, they have this, like, this, like, this ray that, like, makes them alive again. But when They can the switch rays... them on and off. Yeah. But when the ray's on, they mistake them for humans and attack them. <laughs> like, there's a scene where, like, they show off uh, one of the characters who'd become a, who'd become a zombie. Mm-hmm. And um, she turns it on. He begins to attack the other guy. The gun's jammed. And like, they eventually manage to fix it. But he had his own gun on him? Yeah. There's so many questions I have about this movie. I was really confused while watching this movie. It was like a weird fever dream. It so. is a, It is a bit of a weird FIFA dream. Um so the three zombies we have is um uh, I think it's like a police constable. Uh who was like a detective or something. Yeah. Um he was What a face. That guy 
that guy was like really expressive. I really, I actually quite liked his acting. He was the most zombie-like of the zombies, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, you have we have an actress who was um, Vampira. Yeah. Uh, she's like an early horror icon. And then Bella Lugosi. And they definitely take a more vampire angle with him. And I wonder why. <laughs> it's not like his most famous role was fucking Dracula. Well, there is something about his aura that tells me, well, not make him a, ra- uh, a zombie, make him a vampire. Yeah. But we mustn't forget the fact that Bella Lugosi died very early into the filming of it. And they wanted to preserve his legacy, which, you know, I respect. But instead of having it, like, you keep the scenes of, you know, before he was a zombie. Mm. And then, you know, you recast for when he's a zombie and just do makeup. Mm. They cut between Bela Lugosi as a zombie and not. And it's so fucking obvious. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, strange, you know, strange shit's happening. The military's called in, and the, then that plot point's kind of dropped. So the military is called in, and like they start to shoot at, uh, shoot at them, and it's made out to be this kind of like this kind of deal that like they're covering it up. Yeah, like. It's kind of weird that um, they are able to cover all this stuff up because, the to be honest, the the aliens don't um, try to hide. Yeah, that's they make it really obvious. Yeah, (laughs) they fly over Hollywood in broad daylight. Yeah, and um. Even though uh, people never heard of uh, aliens and stuff like this, they just look at it and um, are kind of okay with it. They just go with it. It reminds me of, like, from Scary Movie 3, where uh, Leslie Nielsen's character, who's the president, is like, wow, our new... Our new circular ships are great! Like, sir, those aren't our ships, those those are aliens. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it's like, it's so fucking dumb. And, um, the pilot, he's, like, really distressed because, like, he he's seen aliens but he can't report on it. And then they have... Okay, this is an exchange that started off quite cute, but then it just fucking went on. <laughs> he's gotta go away for a flight, but his wife, who lives near the cemetery where weird shit's happening, mm-hmm. has to stay behind. So he's like... Make sure you lock the doors. And she's like, I will. And he's like, I locked the side door too. It's like, okay. And he, they just keep going. And I'm like, we get it. <laughs> we get it. Are they still talking about this? <laughs> they are. That's a theme with this movie. Like... <sighs> Well, um, I don't think it makes much sense to uh, sum up the whole movie and go like this. Maybe we focus more on um, bizarre scenes. That might be for the best, because that, let's be honest here, this film Because is it's plot. really hard. It's hard to sum up the plot. Like, I watched the movie and I don't understand what happened. I feel like... And I think this is a running theme with this movie. You could sum up this movie's plot in a sentence, but you you also need a novel to understand what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Okay. Like, watching Tenet was easier. <laughs> watching an episode of Sherlock is easier. <laughs> okay. So, um, as you suggested this great idea, um, what, what weird CG you want to highlight first? Hmm... Maybe the one where they find out that 
the grave of the inspector who died is um oh no no was it was it when his grave was uh empty or was it when he died they um, where he raved around his gun the other police guy they did this in both <laughs> so there's a police guy character who when he's talking to people he like gestures at them with his gun yeah it's like oh my god that is so dangerous like this old uh, police guy um the guy who dies um he heard something and goes on to look <laughs> where this uh, noise came from um and then he's cornered by this vampire lady and Bella Lugosi. Yes. And gets killed. And the other three cops kind of hear him scream or something like that. Or, they hear no, the no, gunshot. They hear, like, the, they hear his um, gunshots. His gunfire, yeah. right? Yes. And they're like, should we look at him? Do you think he's all right? Yeah, they they have no urgency. No. You know that. So like, you know the whole thing with like pointing the guns. <laughs> so they remade this movie. It's just called Plan Nine. Um, it was like a loving tribute, and J- James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, stars as the cop. So which cop? The cop who waves around the gun? The cop who waves around the gun. Okay. And he does that. That's not my favourite character. But he... we go on about that later. But yeah, we'll get to... <laughs> We'll get that. Like, um They so he points the gun So he um before when they were with the gun handler, he pointed the gun and he was like, Yeah, we don't do that. You you can't do that in any film. Don't point guns at people. Even if they're not loaded, don't just point guns at people. Mm. <laughs> It's so fucking dangerous. <laughs> like everybody knows what happened in the movie The Crow. You know it, right? I don't. The, the movie where Brandon Lee got shot. Oof. Oh dear. Yeah, he died. <laughs> oh god. Because they had a scene where the character gets shot and... Um, they actually had the gun loaded. Yeah, the gun was loaded. God, you, you just have people on set. So like, uh. Yeah, actually, the guy who checks it wasn't there, but they decided to uh, go with it anyway. God. So, yeah, the son of Bruce that'd Lee be died like, because of this. That'd be fucking like... Like, okay, we're full big saw one. You know, they put it in the reverse bear trap. And then they're like, hang on, was that the fake reverse bear trap? Or was that the actual the real bear one? trap? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's tragic. Um, I'm t- this film has a lot of bizarre moments. And I think. Um, I think one of... This is jumping much further ahead in the plot. But we've got to talk about the alien's motivation for, you know, raising all three of the dead. All three. Yeah. They only raise three people. Uh, so, um... Do you... The, um... The motivation is basically that they are far more advanced than humanity, but they've kind of got they've got a more peaceful scientific way about it. Mm-hmm. And they explain that it's almost like technology is almost like a set path. You know, like you know, like huma- technology was always going to. Uh, re- lead to humanity discovering like, you know, like electricity and stuff like that. Yeah, first fire, electricity, then bombs and stuff like this. Yeah. And they're concerned because 
they're already showing that they're using nuclear weaponry for evil. And they're concerned because they're just on the cusp of discovering something called Solar Night, which is mm-hmm. a way to harness the energy of sunlight. Which is a really mm. cool concept. Yeah, basically turning this sunlight into a giant bomb. And they're concerned that like, if they use it incorrectly, they will literally cause every star in the universe to be destroyed. And Which, actually, yeah, sounds about human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, this idea um, was really interesting. Like, this basic concept um, that humans... Uh, that aliens try to intervene because humans are eventually going to destroy the entire universe. Mm-hmm. I think this idea is great and could have made such a interesting story. Like that aliens aren't really the evil ones, but the ones who try to protect the universe. And just because humans no longer are um, kind of concealed in uh, Earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, they could have made a really good plot point if they had, like, a human villain who was trying to cover it up. Yeah. And, like, the aliens were like, like, we don't want to do this, but you're not listening to us, and, like, it's you or the universe, you know, we, we're we making our decision now. Yeah, or we didn't even need a human villain. Maybe just a human character who at first doesn't understand the aliens. Mm-hmm. And he is brainwashed to believe that the aliens are evil. And yeah. then he understands why they are here. Because they make a great... It's a really, I actually really like the scene where, after he's explained the weapon, one of the humans says, I think it's the pilot, says, well, this will make us an even stronger nation. And like he goes on this massive rant, like... He's like, your stupid minds, your stupid minds. <laughs> and he's basically like, and like, I, despite, you know, the overacting, I agree with him. It's like, you've just been told that you're on the cusp of inventing a weapon that will destroy the universe. And your first thought is, well, this is going to make us great. It's like, my God, you idiots. <laughs> like, could you imagine if they took more of an approach where it's like, they've let the humans in for like one last negotiation. Mm. And he says that, and that's when he goes from, you know, like, peacemaker on the ver, you know, pe- peacemaker who is really got of options to, like, okay, let's just take out humanity. Yeah. Because it's like. With all our three zombies. With all three of them. Okay, by then it's only two. <laughs> yeah, because. <left. laughs> I fucking love this scene. They decide that to make the humans notice them. Which. How have they not at this point? Um, they, they're because gonna send... the government is, uh, covering, it is up. covering it up. And I don't even know why. Yeah. Is, it, uh, is there any point where they explain why the government is covering I up the existence of aliens? I don't think they do. <laughs> I, th- I think it's like to avoid, like, oh, maybe it's to avoid mass panic. But the aliens are very explicitly trying to help humanity. Yeah. Um, so, they, they said Bela Lugosi's zombie to uh, the humans, and then they're going to activate like another frequency of the ray to to kill him. And by that, mm-hmm. I mean turn a recently deceased corpse into a skeleton, because that's how it works. <laughs> and they don't seem that bothered about it. Not really. <laughs> they're like, oh, look at that. Oh my god, so like... <laughs> oh, what? There's so many, like, little different angles to look at this movie. So, um... I think this is, what like, a very good one to look at. Um, do you want to talk about the fact that, for some reason, they decided to make the zombies act like vampires? With the exception of one zombie. 
<laughs> because one of the zombies was Vampire and the other one was Bela Lugosi. And like, I understand maybe having like a bit of a reference to, you know, you know. Oh, like, wait, legacy. wait, wait, wait. The one zombie was actually Vampire. Yes. The act was who... Oh, okay. So they yeah. just reprised their roles? <laughs> you know, the, a- the actress was Vampira and, like, they're basically playing themselves. They're basically playing the most iconic roles. Wow. And, like, I would understand, like, a little bit of a reference, you know? But for fuck's sake, he's walking around with a cape over his face. <laughs> Okay, I, it it I looks love like this film. It's terrible. <laughs> it looks like um the one who played the zombie. The one who was also actually played, a zombie. Yeah, also played a zombie in a movie before. Yeah, apparently um he, he was quite so from what I know he was quite good for horror films like hmm. you need a spooky big guy you got him in. I don't know what. Six, six, uh, three is what height it is. Six for oh fuck, he's he's a he's a tall guy. Yeah, and uh, four hundred and forty pounds. Big guy too. Um, yeah, this film. So this film is um. This film, I think, this film like a lot of it gets covered in the film Edward because this is his most famous movie Mm. Edward is the documentary the documentary docudrama it's a a story about his life and I really want to watch it apparently it's a beautiful movie but like this still gets referenced a few times like um I know that like um I learned this from rental reviews like you know how sometimes They'll have like a, a character watching a film within a film. Yeah. Um, in Halloween, in H- Halloween H two O, that was it. Like that was the film that, in the film they had. They watched. There's a bit Glenn of plan nine. It's specifically the you sh- your stupid mind scene. Oh. Okay. Your stupid minds, your stupid minds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any more weird scenes you want to talk about? Um, <laughs> maybe the police officer who gets knocked down twice, knocked out twice by oh the zombies. Oh god, the poor chap! <laughs> like uh, these zombies, I don't know what their thing is, but. They love to knock out this one police officer. Yeah. With a chopping motion to the neck. It's not very effective. But yeah, but he effective. faints two times. Mm-hmm. And I think this police officer is my favorite character in this movie. <laughs> he is rather entertaining. Because I think he uh, understood as much as I understood of this movie. <laughs> Just because, like, I'm like, oh, well, that definitely happened. Yeah. Um, I think I know what my favorite character is. Okay, who is it? My favorite character was the obviously cardboard gravestones. They. No- I know that's not a character, but they were my favourite part of a movie. <laughs> because okay. cause they don't just film in a graveyard and, you know, film the other side of the gravestones. Mm. <laughs> They're like billowing in the wind. <laughs> yeah, and I think this movie couldn't decide if it's um, night or daytime. It does They switch quite them. a lot. It does. It, it does. Uh, um, there's also the great scene of um, 
the fact that when they've defeated the aliens by beating the ever-loving shit out of them. And setting their ship on fire. And setting the ship on fire. Um, the woman, the woman alien, tries to take off in it mm. while it's on fire. Which is like, that's not a great idea. Not the not the greatest idea, no. So, I actually forgot um, what was the ending of the movie. The aliens catch catch fire and die. Uh, the the remaining two zombies disintegrate, and then uh, the psychic guy gives another speech. Okay, so the thing we learned is we just kill the aliens and continue to um, develop um, a weapon that kills everybody in the universe. Oh my god, you're right. The problem isn't resolved. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> like, they could have... It would have kind of a meaning... If uh, those three guys who went inside the spaceship um, came out of it and told somebody about what they just heard. But no. Yeah. They are just or happy like, that... They, like, took, yeah. like, a document about it. It's like... It's like... And the police officer's like, right, I'm gonna take this to, like, to the mayor. He'll know what to do. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh... uh <laughs> so that's a pretty dark ending. <laughs> it is. Do you want to know who was the replacement for Bella Lugosi? Yeah. A chiropractor. Okay. How did this happen? Um, hang on, sorry. I'll I'll be right back. Okay. So here I am, I am alone, and now I will... I'm good. Okay. I am back. Okay. Greetings. Um, let us resynchronize, because I accidentally, for just a split second, paused the recording. Okay. So, five... Four, three, two, three, two, one. one. Okay, so yeah, um, there we are again. Yeah, I had to, we had to do a brief cut. Um, yeah, it was a chiropractor, and it was um, they, I think it was just like I think it was just finding who we could use. Um. So it was probably the guy who just walked by. Probably. And they were like, now you are Bella Lugosi. Yeah. Despite the fact that you're taller and look nothing like him. Okay. <laughs> it, uh, this film is often named the worst film of all time, but I, I disagree. Mm. It's not a great film. No. No, no, no. It's by far not a great film. <laughs> however... But I've seen worse. However, um... It was... It, yeah, well, I've said worse. It's like, it was a fun watch. I think you can actually see that, um... The people making it uh, were people who like movies. Mm. Yeah. Like they pay homage to Dracula and this other vamp vampire lady. Uh huh. And they try to uh, make an original story, but sadly they fail. So the story is original. But they failed to... It was really low budget, so, like... Yeah. I respect them making it. 
Um, <laughs> and I'm impressed that they got Bella Lugosi. I am impressed, yeah. Although, sadly, Bella Lugosi kind of. He kind of ended up getting, like, the short end of the stick while Boris Karloff kind of became, you know, an iconic horror actor. Mm. Bela Lugosi got kind of, like, slowly written out more and more, sadly. Oh, that's sad. Like, um, those great actors who were big in the silent era of movies. Yeah. And Brendan Fraser. Because what the fuck happened to Brendan Fraser? He was in fucking everything, and now, like, where is he? Is he okay? I hope he's okay. Brendan Fraser, he is... He seems like a great guy, and I always love to see him in movies. And now he seems like a lost soul. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like that one guy, the nerdy guy from, um, from Ghostbusters. It's like, he just doesn't show up much anymore. Yeah. I think Brandon Fraser's uh, wife died, and oh, yeah. that threw him off. Um, do you know what's something interesting that I'm surprised? Uh, sorry, just, just change the subject. So interesting that I'm surprised, like, n- never came about from this film. There wasn't a mystery science theater episode on this. A mystery what? <sighs> Um, Mystery Science Theatre is mm-hmm. a comedy show where it is a um, a guy and like um, in show it's three robots but yeah, it's a couple guys Okay. watch and give live commentary over really bad films oh we have something similar in Germany and there isn't an episode on this I'm like that's You'd think it's like one of the ones you do first. <laughs> it's iconically bad. They probably did stuff like Samurai Cop. Um, I got, I've got, I've got like, I've got like the, uh, the like full episode list. They did stuff. I hope they did Samurai they Cop. They did stuff like Manos, The Hand of Fate, which is a film that we are absolutely doing at some point. Oh no. It's a horror movie <laughs> that starts with a nine minute driving scene. Okay. Um <gasps> I have to admit, like t- <sighs> There's something I love about this movie. I don't know whether I don't know whether it's a fact that you can tell they had a bit of a fun time filming it. Or mm-hmm. the fact that it's a really low budget film and it's independent which you really couldn't make independent films. Mm-hmm. You know, like... It's a bit tricky to make indie films now, but imagine doing that in the 50s. Yeah, I do respect them for that. And, like... I know this film's terrible, but this is one of the films that, like, I feel like... You know what, if I want to put on something fun to show someone, I'd... You know, I'd show it to them. Yeah, I'd put that on. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I think it's... Um... You have to watch... If you watch it, make sure to watch it with uh, good friends. Yes, I completely agree. It's more fun that way. Yeah. Maybe you can do a drinking game or stuff like this. Do a drink... Okay, okay, okay. Here is my proposed plan nine drinking game. Take a shot... Okay. ...when the police officer says, yeah. And also take a shot when it swaps from Bella the Ghosty to the chiropractor and back... And take a shot every time you see a flying saucer. Yes! And depending on the version you watch, take a shot if you see a boob mic. (laughs) It's such a dumb movie. I I, I love this film to death. It's stupid. 
I want to get it on VHS, just, you know, to have the VHS version. Okay. Okay. Have you got any more things you want to talk about this movie? Uh, no, not really. You, do you have something um, else? I, I'm honestly, I'm honestly done. I've got nothing else to really say. This film was like... There's a lot of great dumb shit in this film, but like, there's only so much I can talk about. Yeah, of course, it's hard to talk about it that much because there's nothing to talk about um, the cinematography or stuff like that. Mm. And a lot of it's badness. You've kind of got to see. You know, I can't describe yeah. the vibe. Okay. Sit down with friends. If it's possible again. Um, have a drink. Have a drink. Have some popcorn. Have some snacks. Have some nice talks. Maybe do live commentary. Yeah. <laughs> so. What are we rate? What are you rating this film? Rating it for what it is? Or rating it as a film? Just as a film. Or both. Okay, as a film, I would rate it a solid one. It is getting... Because I know a movie that is a zero, uh. and it's... I did enjoy this movie more than the watch other one. Watch your zero movie. I don't want to talk about it. Maybe we watch it together sometime. Oh, that worries me. Um, I... <laughs> So, I, when I rank movies, I don't have a zero. Like, one is my worst. Okay. Therefore, um, I think I'm going to give this movie... I think I'm going to give this movie a two. That's not to say I didn't oh. enjoy this movie, which I absolutely did. I enjoyed this movie for what it is, but I don't think it's, it's not a good as a movie. <laughs> It's like, I really enjoyed Mothra, but Mothra is not a 10 out of 10. No. <laughs> Mothra is much better than this. In fact, I'd highly recommend watching Mothra over this, but <laughs> you should still watch this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. And Mothra's soundtrack slays. Yes. Mothra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Oh, this film is in the public domain. So it's on YouTube. There's the in colour version's also on Amazon Prime, and apparently the colorization's pretty good. Um Okay. So Leon, what is our next episode going to be? Our next episode will be Shin Godzilla. Because I do have the Blu-ray Lying, li laying, lying, 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 lying around for two months now. And you've just been waiting and to watch. Yeah, I've, I've actually, um, I've got the, I've had the, DL the DVD for a couple of years now, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to watch this. And you didn't watch it till now. I'm really bad at watching. I'm not even lying. This, wow. this year has been like. I've watched so many movies this year. <laughs> I think one year I watched, like, five movies. Yeah, and I still can't believe you didn't watch Neon Genesis Evangelion. I'm getting ground to it. For some... Yeah, <laughs> of course you do. Yeah. And then we could do um, a special where Claire is traumatised by Neon Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> and, Ter and a past therapy special, session. Claire needs help. <laughs> right. Um, I think we should wrap it up here. Yeah. Thank you for watching or listening, or you know, if you're in the future, you could probably like taste or smell this or something. Maybe some new sixth sense we haven't develop developed yet. Oh, that's new. Yeah, like I don't know. Maybe you could like feel it in the lining of your stomach. But until, you know, that day has come, we will see you next time. Bye.